It's the Garage Guys Report, motorsports news for you. Welcome to episode 7 of the Garage Guys Report, motorsports news for you. I'm your host, Chase Holden of the Garage Guys NASCAR Podcast, and welcome to the show. If this is your first time here, welcome. Go ahead and grab a seat. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment. Let me know who you are, where you're watching from, and don't forget to subscribe to the Garage Guys NASCAR Podcast YouTube channel. If you've been here before, you're a returning Garage Fam regular Welcome back. We got a hell of a show planned. Let's go ahead and just give a quick shout out to Hooters. Hooters is for garage guys. Hooters is for race day. And right now, if you download the Hooters app or go to order.hooters.com, you can save $10 on any $30 or more order using promo code Garage Guys. That's right. So go ahead and get that app. Check out that website. Garage Guys is all about saving you money, and we want you eating Hooters on race day, so make it happen. The offer is valid at participating locations for delivery and carryout orders only. Mmm. Had to get me a little sip. For some reason, it just tastes better out of a Hooters cup. Whatever you're drinking tastes better out of a Hooters cup. It's science. It's factual. But we got a big show in store. We got a lot to talk about. NASCAR Twitter went wild. Uh, at the rain shortened Quaker State 400 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Going to give my thoughts on that. We got a ton of voicemails stacked up. I mean, a ton and a lot of people talking about this Atlanta race. A couple other things from over the weekend as well. Can't wait to dive into those. And then, obviously, we got to give a shout out to the winners real quick. Let, you want to give a shout out to the winners? Let's, let's give a shout out to the winners. All right, shout out to Corey Hahn. Getting it done in the Craftsman Truck Series at Mid-Ohio. John Hunter Nemechek getting it done in Atlanta, the Xfinity race. Could have been a college car, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll take it. And then William Byron gets his fourth victory of the 2023 season in the range-shortened Quaker State 400. Hopefully, some of you out there bet on him because I know I sure didn't. I do have a future for a championship on Willie B, though. And I've been talking about that all season. So this helps put another check in the box heading towards that category. So I can't be too mad about that, but can be a little upset about some other things. And we'll discuss that. And then, uh, yeah, Max Verstappen won the parade in, uh, at the British GP. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, that's a uh, big shout-out to the winners of motorsports this weekend. Good job, winners. If there's any winners that I didn't announce on here from any other series, please make sure you hit me in the comments and let me know some of these series that you want to hear me talk about more regularly. I'm here to serve, baby. I'm here for you. I'm here for the race fans, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say on the Garage Guys Report hotline. You know the number to call each week, 919-769-4477. That's what you got to call. You call it, you leave your voicemail, it gets on the show. It's that simple. And I appreciate everybody taking the time to do that week in and week out. In the final laps of Saturday's NASCAR Xfinity race, Justin Haley and Daniel Hemrick had a shot to get a win for Colleg Racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But Justin Haley decided to let it all hang out by himself, causing neither Colleg teammate to win and John Hunter Nemechek to get the dub to make millions if not billions of nascar sports bettors angry this isn't the first time that daniel hemrick's been involved in such a feat and this photo here shows that he is truly in his prison era (laughs) if you don't know what i'm talking about you probably don't watch dale center but just in case you do daniel hemrick's in prison don't fret the big story this weekend, obviously, was the NASCAR Cup Series race rainout, letting William Byron get his fourth victory of the NASCAR Cup Series season in 2023. I'm one of those people that were pretty upset that the rain came in and that race control decided not to at least get a few more laps in. It's over. There's nothing I can do about it. Congrats to Willie B. You got your fourth win of the season. 
I do have a championship future on William Byron, so I can't be too mad. But I will say that it was a little absurd, and we probably definitely could have got a little more racing in. <laughs> Aside from that one negative thing out of this entire race, I have to say that it was one of the most spectacular races that I have personally witnessed at this track with the new configuration. A lot of fans out there were pretty pissed off that the track was changed and made into more of a super speedway. I really didn't give a shit. As long as my bets cashed on Sunday, I was a happy boy. But tonight, I really got to see what the potential of this new configuration really is because it provided us with some of the best and entertaining racing that I've seen all year long, and I wasn't the only one, and I know there's tons of you out there that feel the same. So shout out to Atlanta Motor Speedway, and shout out to not being too quick to judge as a NASCAR fan, because I hope a lot of you tonight got to witness what we're going to be seeing here moving forward. Moving over to Formula One, Brad Pitt is set to star in a new Formula One movie, and was even out on the grid with the drivers at the British Grand Prix. From this, a tweet was put out by Brian Murphy, basically saying, and we get Talladega Nights. What's wrong with Talladega Nights? I had to chime in on this because I saw somebody that I follow on Twitter mention something about it being fun, and it's just, you know, it's a ha-ha, honky-dory thing for the sport. Brian got serious. Brian's upset. Brian feels like this movie ruined NASCAR. Newsflash. It didn't. If anything, it made it more fun and enjoyable. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. And that goes for everybody watching this program. You know me. And I hope to God that everyone watching this has a little bit of a funny bone inside of them. You have to. You have to know how to laugh at yourself. And as a sport, I think that's what Talladega Nights did for the sport. It was able to, to, to let the sport and all the fans... And all the drivers and everyone involved look at themselves and take it with a grain of salt and have a couple of laughs. I mean, you've got Will Ferrell in this movie, one of the greatest comedic actors of all time. How can you dismiss this film? NASCAR is not F1. NASCAR is not IndyCar. NASCAR is NASCAR. There's a culture there, and it's made by the fans. And at the end of the day, we have the power to make it however we want through the years just by how we show up. So don't get your panties in a wad, man. It's just a movie, and it was a great one. And it's the truth. Shout out to Tyler David Knight. Shout out Will Ferrell in the squad. And of course, another big story out of F1 that has nothing to do with racing because no one really gives a shit. Martin Brundle from Sky Sports hit the grid at the British Grand Prix and tried to get an interview with the model, Cara Delvine. Cara decided not to speak to Martin, and Martin got salty as fuck. Carla Delvine here. We'll see if we can um, just stand in the way, really. Uh, she doesn't want to talk, but everybody needs to talk on the grid. Uh, that's, the, that's the deal now. Everybody talks uh, on, on the grid. Um, can we have a quick chat, Sky F1? Good to see you on the grid. He said... He said, well, the deal is everybody has to speak on the grid, but, uh, you know, hey. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right, well, I'm sure it would have been extremely interesting. After going on Twitter and looking over some of these tweets, I saw where Kara basically was sent a tweet out saying, thanks for seeing both sides of the situation. You know, celebrities don't always have to talk to you. Nobody has to talk to you. Hell, the door greeter at Walmart doesn't have to talk to you if he's having a bad day. And what the fuck do you care? It seems that Martin thinks that he is God. The God of the F1 grid. And today, he was sadly mistaken by a young female model who shut him down so fast. You know, we're not talking to Orlando Bloom high on coke here, Martin. This is Cara Delvine. That's about all I got for news this week, guys. Let's head over to voicemails. So we had 16 callers this week on Episode 7 of the Garage Guys Report. Let's hear it for all of you calling in. Yeah. 
I love it. Look, I'm loving it week in and week out. It really is the best. So we're going to go ahead and get into some of these voicemails. And I think it's going to be my new ritual now before we start these voicemails. It's just like I say on the playback stream, guys, on playback.tv slash garage guys when we watch the races on Sunday. You got to pop a Zen to win. It's the truth. I like to pop my Zens to win. Bam. Let's dive into these voicemails. We're going to go ahead and start things off with a uh, very regular caller. He's called in every week. He's quickly on his way to being uh, the the caller of the month, the report hotline caller of the month. Uh, that's going to be an award that I'm going to start giving out. That's right. So another reason to keep calling. Uh, this is uh, Brady from Mississippi to kick things off. Let's see what Brady had to say. What's up, Chase? Brady from Mississippi. Uh, I want to start today's voicemail off with a story from this morning. I got a text from my brother, and it says, McLaren brought some huge upgrades and starting P2, P3 with Ferrari and Merck chasing behind. Should be great action if you're out at church early. So I responded, I just got out. What Netflix episode just dropped? And then he responds with, Norris is leading for the first three laps of the race, keeping me updated. I got back and I turned that shit on. I'm sorry, F1 is just dog shit. It's 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 hard to watch. It's tough, man. It really is. Um, on to the more important part of this call. I love Atlanta. Anyone who doesn't like the new repave or doesn't like the track uh, definitely needs a lobotomy. Um, the Pinsky boys definitely. I don't know if those cars are legal. Um, I've never really had. I can't really remember the last time I was on the edge of my couch for like 30 minutes straight. I love Atlanta. Great race. And, um, yeah, last thing, Eric Jones, terrorist, confirmed. That's all I got for you this week, Chase. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much for calling, Brady. I'm guessing that uh, you had some Eric Jones on your betting card this week for the Super Speedway. We all know we love to bet on the Super Speedway. So if you did, I hate that for you. But uh, very interesting opening up your voicemail with your brother talking about Formula One. Yeah, apparently Lando almost had it, man. It would have been nice to see somebody other than Max Verstappen get a win for the fucking sixth time in a row. But we're not dumb. We know that all the action in F1 comes on the grid before the race, like we saw in the news segment. That's where all the real action is. Thanks again for calling, Brady. I appreciate you. Uh, let's now move over to Cole Trickle from California. Hey, Chase. This is uh, Cole Trickle uh, from Playback. Uh, Mike Hondo from Twitter. Dale knows me as Cole Trickle from his iRacing stream. So I'm calling from Redding, California, up in the great north here. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, didn't win a lot of money. We're stuck to DraftKings out here. So uh, only won a handful of dollars. Still a little bit of green, though, like you said, it's a season. Uh, so I'm still working towards that final goal. Uh, was overall very surprised by the racing at Atlanta um, throughout most of it. Um, actually thought it was pretty exciting. Bummed it was rain delayed. Uh, hate to see a race called like that. Always hate that. I want to see the full race. But as they say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. And as a Byron fan at heart, 24 fan, Gordon guy. Um, good to see my guy get another win. Fought hard from the back. But still, you know, He's running his own game, and I'm running mine, and that is to make some damn money in fantasy. So I will see you on the uh, the next episode or the Twitter space to try to get the next win. But, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Love you guys, and uh, you make NASCAR more enjoyable for everybody. Thank you. Melt my heart. Cold trickle. The man himself calling in, saying those those kind words there at the end. I appreciate the call. Cole and uh yeah with Willie B man look I'm not mad about it anymore I'm, re I'm really not I'm not mad at all at the fact whoever was up front they played the strategy they stayed out they they figured the rain was coming it was what it was it would have just been cool to see him win it under green you know under a green flag condition maybe just you know four or five more laps you know it's all it would have took but uh nonetheless yeah we live to fight another day New Hampshire's coming up next week so 
uh, plenty more opportunities to, to get some money in. And, and yes, like I always say, a day in the green is a good day for me. That goes for NASCAR DFS, betting, whatever it might be. So thanks so much for calling in, Cole. And uh, now let's move over to Connor from Dallas. Hey, Garage Guy. This is Connor Gage. You calling him from Dallas, Texas. Uh, really mixed feelings on this one. The racing was incredible. Um, I hate that it ended under yellow. I felt like they could have gotten in a few more green uh, laps, but definitely feel that they were being making the right choice staying under uh, caution just with last August at Daytona, how crazy that was. Um, as a William Byron fan, I can't complain too much, but I do hate that he got the win like that, especially since there's just been a lot of feelings like he's been gifted a lot of wins this year. I don't agree with that statement, but he definitely was kind of lucky on this one. Uh, but, yeah, I thought it was a great race overall. Just hate that it ended that way. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for the call, Connor. Yeah, going ahead and just getting straight into your point about William Byron. Look, when it comes to racing, it's just about being there when it's time. William Byron and his team, they did what they did. They got there when it was time. By no means did he have the best car. But I also will back you up there. I, I don't think that it's just all been luck for him this year. There's a lot of strategy at play. There's a lot of different things that him, Rudy Fugel, and the boys have been putting together. So I'm with you on that statement. And anybody that says that he's just been handed luck is probably just not a William Byron fan, to be honest. I'm a very unbiased guy when it comes to drivers. I'm just going to tell it like it is. Uh, other than that, though, yes, I fully agree. Great race. And, yeah, another call just reminding us about how that great race had to be ended under the rain and the caution. I'm going to move on now. Uh, let's go to Man Who Woke Up. Man, I woke up after killing about 50 beers. I watched good old boy John Hunter Nemechek be a nuisance with that little pencil-looking head. I don't know. It looks like an eraser on a pencil. And I feel like shit this morning. Well, I'm going to stay in bed. Bye now. Thanks for calling. Man who woke up dreaming of John Hunter Nemechek as a pencil head. Thanks for the call. Let's go ahead now and go uh, to Dude Who Lost $800. Listen here, NASCAR. I want to say, fuck you. This Atlanta race, you fucking knew it was going to rain. You couldn't move it up? You couldn't move the fucking race up an hour or two so we could see a whole fucking race? It was incredible. Stage one, stage two, that shit was fucking awesome. And then you run a fucking 15-lap parade around the race just waiting for it to fucking rain? That's how you end this shit? And I lost 800 fucking dollars? Fuck you, NASCAR. You wonder why your fucking ratings are worse than the goddamn Ellen DeGeneres show. This shit is why. Know what the fuck you're doing. Fuck you, NASCAR. Calm yourself down. It's not worth it to say that the ratings are worse than the Ellen DeGeneres show. I don't even know if that's true. It might be. But it's just $800, man. Leave your name and where you're calling from next time. Hell, I'll, I'll find someone to give you $800. You probably have to pay him back, but I'll find them. Thank you for calling. Let's go to another one of our regular callers. Good buddy from the Discord, Matt Dumpster. Chase. Matt Dumpster from the Discord and the great state of Tennessee calling you from Music City. Um, thought it was a great race tonight. Hated the ending. Hated how it had to end. I thought on NASCAR. It's Mother Nature. Nothing you can do. But, you know, considering I think NASCAR had a lot of new eyes on them this week, you know, with Chicago bringing in a lot of new viewers, I thought that 90% of this race was an absolute grand slam for NASCAR. So, 
overall, I thought it was a great race. Congrats to William Byron. Moving on next week to New Hampshire. But uh, looking forward to listening to the rest of your show. See you. Thanks for calling in, Matt. Look, yeah, you got the right attitude with it, man. We got to move forward. We got to move on. We, we, we don't call the shots. They suck. It sucks that it has to happen like that, especially when we're betting on it and we got money on the line. But look, I, I want to go back to the voicemail, Cole's voicemail. It's like he said. I know Bob Pockers tweeted out about it, you know, like the, the main reasoning being because of what happened in Daytona last year. I mean, I can see where that could be factored in, but we could have got a few more laps. And I'm, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to just keep moving on. Uh, we're going to go now to – my eyes are getting terrible, guys. Let's go to Matt from Minnesota. Hi there. My name is Matt. I am calling from uh, northern Minnesota. Uh, tell you what, I thought this race was really good. Um, but there's a catch. I thought it was really good. The first two stages were – phenomenal i mean i thought the racing was just fantastic it was on the edge of my feet i think nascar did a really great job my biggest issue was that this this all could have been avoided if it just started five hours earlier could have had a full race and that's my biggest thing is i think if nascar just started earlier we could have had a fantastic race could have had a real winner i mean i love byron obviously but you know he didn't really win uh and i just i think overall that it could have all been avoided it could have all been a fantastic race 10 out of 10 and yeah i don't know what are you gonna do but you know happy for byron happy for his team and uh, i hope he wins the championship he's my championship pick so uh those are my thoughts thanks guys thanks for calling matt from minnesota I know you say William Byron didn't really win, but newsflash, he did. Um, other than that, another great comment, another great testimony of how good the racing was at Atlanta. Love to hear that. It's always good to hear NASCAR fans getting behind the racing style, and I think that there's not one person out there that would say any different than that. Uh, let's move on now to another regular that we have each week on the show in the running for report caller of the month hunter from arkansas you might know me as hunter from arkansas but this week i'm casey Raysom, and for the third week in a row i'd like to give a shout out to track house racing this time the boss man got his win in the trans am series at road america other than that congrats to Corey heim for winning the truck race John Hunter Nemechek for that Xfinity win, and William Byron, even though I'm pissed off at it in the race, rain. I'm Casey Raysom, and I'll talk to you next time. That was Hunter from Arkansas creating his own segment on the voicemail segment of the Garage Guys Report. Thank you for that, Hunter. Casey Raysom. I, I see what you did there. All right, let's go now to a guy I hadn't heard from in a while. Jack from Boston is back. Let's see what Jack has to say. What's going on, Garage? It's Jack from Boston calling in again, way more sober. Uh, that was a fun race. That was the most exciting stuff that I've seen in a while, but besides last week, obviously, with SVG getting it done. Uh Brad Keselowski let me down big time. Will he be stolen? What's up with that? Fucking rain. Looking forward to New Hampshire. We'll be there eating so much lobster. Thanks, thanks for the call, Jack. Uh, the, the lobster comment is great. I thought you were going to say something else, but you didn't. But I appreciate you calling. Thanks for your thoughts. Let's move on now to a uh, new caller. James from Texas. This is James uh, from Texas calling in uh, about the Atlanta race. Just want to say, as a guy who absolutely hated the Atlanta change, a guy who was uh, who is definitely a staunch supporter of the old school Atlanta. Um, this is the first time where I watched the Atlanta race and I was thoroughly entertained. It feels like these guys have to have great handle on their race cars. They have to make grip where they can find it. It feels like old Daytona. 
back in the late 90s and the 2000s. And personally, I'm becoming much more of a fan of the racetrack itself. The racing was great tonight. Guys were aggressive. It was fun. Um, I, you know, I'm glad NASCAR did what they did by deciding to be cautious with the rain, knowing that they needed to call it with the storm coming in. I know not everyone's going to love that. Not everyone wants to see William Byron win another race, but I think that this was a good overall night for NASCAR. Um, it makes Atlanta more of a positive change for the for the people who are supporters of the old school style. Don't like seeing the super speedway racing. It's hard to argue with what we saw tonight. So congrats to Byron for running back up through the field with the damaged underbody of the car. Good overall race and uh, makes me more excited for next week. Can't hate that. Thanks for the call, James. I appreciate you uh, giving us your thoughts on here. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and go to another new caller, it looks like. I uh, think that this fella's name is Caleb from Iowa. Hey, Chase. Uh, my name's Caleb. I'm calling from Iowa. And uh, they just called the NASCAR race. And as a Brad Kizilowski fan through and through, I – this hurts. This hurts a lot. I mean – they could have just called this like 30 minutes earlier. I mean, what a quick fucking call. Fuck, 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 fuck. Willie B. Willie fucking B. Ah, this, this, this stinks, Chase. This stinks. This stinks. I just, playoffs, playoffs hope still alive. Playoffs hope still alive. But goddamn. God damn. That was Caleb from Iowa. Sounds like a passionate Brad K fan. Uh, another voicemail to remind us that Brad K was there. But it doesn't matter. Uh, now we're going to go to Bubba from Arizona. Hey, Garage Guys. And this is Bubba. I'm calling from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm on Twitter at Black Number Three. And, man, what a shitty way to end a race. Like, that was such a good race. And, and especially, I'm a Truex fan, and watching him get wrecked on pit row and then get caught up in another wreck and come all the way back up to the front of the field. And, man, just what a crappy way to end a Sunday. But I'm just excited to look forward to New Hampshire next week and hopefully maybe – uh Truex can get a run there, maybe a more favorable track for him. Also, I remember watching a couple of weeks ago, you had that, that kid on, and he was talking about, oh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it didn't sound right. He was talking about Trey Hill and everyone. Man, that kid is so dumb. If, if you told him it was raining soup outside, he'd be outside waiting with a fork. Um, but I got my, uh, what is it now, 11th Miller Lot waiting for me, so I got to get back to that. Stay doing what you do, man. Thank you. Cheers to you, Bubba. Thanks for calling in, man. All right. Now we're going to go to a, uh, a caller that hasn't called in in a while. Uh, was, was one of our uh, top callers for a minute. Let's hear from Bill from Belleville. Hey, man. It's Bill from Belleville. I achieved my weekly goal of giving money to DraftKings. And now I'm sitting here on the couch. Goddamn SVU is on. Man, nothing turns the vibe around after a range short and heartbreaker. Quite like sex crimes. Jesus Christ. I'm on the couch. I'm covered in cold slaw. I just don't have the motivation to explain or take care of that situation. I've just been waiting for that Brad K payday. It's just Brad K heartache, man. But I tell you, that man gave it his all. Anyway, God bless JJ Yaley. God bless the garage. Bill from Belleville. Covered in coleslaw. I'm out. God damn. What's it going to take for a Brad K win? We got Bill from Belleville covered in coleslaw on the couch. I've, I've had too many voicemails. 
about Brad K tonight. It seems like everybody was was ready for the Brad K payday. Bill, I'm sorry. Covered in coleslaw on the couch watching SVU, man. That about sums it up right there, doesn't it? Bill, thank you for calling. I'm sorry, man. We're going we're gonna to get through this, dude. Don't worry. Bill from Belleville. Good to hear from you again, man. All right, we're going to move now to uh, Big Al, the NASCAR guy. Chase. Big Al, the NASCAR guy, calling you from New Jersey. Love you, buddy. Listen, I'm a pretty level-headed guy. I rage-tweeted at NASCAR tonight. That's what I think about today's race. Called him a clown show and a Mickey Mouse organization. Because that's what they are. You know it's going to rain. Do something about it. Move the race up. The fans going to the race would rather miss the start of the race than see a good finish. The people watching at home, I don't understand how they can run a race knowing it's going to rain, and even when the caution comes out after the pre-spin. Get it cleaned up, get them back on the track, finish on their green. Absolute clown show this weekend. A great race ruined by an absolute joke of a finish. Love you, brother. Hope you're well. Thank you for calling Big Al, the NASCAR guy. Look, you know, it, it takes a lot, you know, not a lot for some people to rage tweet at NASCAR, but for, for some people it does. And I, I'm just going to say this much, you know, it, there's a lot of logistics involved in moving up a race, especially when this event was pre-planned. You know, the weather looked good earlier in the day. So just kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit there and just being a little realistic with it. I mean, it's just really hard to do those kind of things. Now, could they have waved the red flag and not called the race maybe waited for a little bit yeah probably could they have gotten a few more laps in probably i've already said enough about that though thank you for calling i appreciate you calling big al the nascar guy uh we're gonna go now to uh jim cantor from atlanta motor speedway hey this is jim cantor from atlanta motor speedway What's the point of these rain tires anyways if we can't dang, 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 dang to a checkered flag every time? I feel like a race didn't even happen. All those Monster Energies, all those Coke Zeros they're sipping and they can't make it to 3 a.m.? I'm going to merge this call with the cops because we just got robbed. Hold up. That was weatherman Jim Cantor calling from Atlanta Motor Speedway. We, we all can't stay hopped up on the Mountain Dews till 3 a.m. quite like you, my man. We try. They could have tried. I'd have stayed up for it. If it's just like one time every now and then. But there was good racing, so come on, Jim. It, we, we, we did get to see some good racing tonight. At least we can say that much. All right, let's go ahead now and get to our last call. I believe this is our last call of the night uh this should be a call that i got in from last week this is austin from oxford he kind of called it a weird time so i think it's talking about some of the events last week but uh we'll go ahead and play it appreciate the call here is austin from oxford Hey Chase, this is uh, Austin from Oxford, Mississippi, or just a little bit, a little bit outside Oxford, Mississippi. First time caller. Love the show, man. But hey, listen. So we just got done with the Chicago street race just this past week. Everybody's talking about where we should take this thing next. This, if we should leave Chicago or not, or if we should take it to another town. My question to you is: this, What do you think the sweet spot is with road course racing in general? We have 36 spots on the schedule. How many how many of those spots should be taken up by road courses? And do you count the street race as a road course? I appreciate that question. Uh, Austin calling in from Oxford. Thanks so much. Sound like a first-time caller, and I'm glad that you're enjoying the program. Um, you know, for me, I definitely would love to see him return to the Chicago street course. I'd love to see a few more of them added. Um, I don't mind more road courses, and, and I don't think that it's really a problem like most people do. I mean, of course, I love ovals, but I feel like we could maybe get away with adding one or two more to what we have now. 
uh, and, and I would be fine with that. And most of you guys already know I want that New Orleans street course real bad. So, um, yeah, I don't mind them whatsoever. I think they're fun. And, and I think that maybe getting some of the road course races early in the year, like before Coda, like we're going to have a spot now with Auto Club. I think it presents a perfect opportunity for an amazing event that could go down. I would love to see them leave Daytona and go to Sebring. NASCAR owns the track. IMSA owns it. Why not try it out? I would love to see him hit Sebring uh, during Auto Club week. So we'll see if uh, if that would ever be a possibility. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, that's something I would like to see add. But, yeah, a couple more I don't think will hurt whatsoever. But uh, that's going to do it for voicemails on this episode of the Garage Guys Report. Thanks, everyone, for calling. And, again, the number to call if you want to hear yourself on the show, 919 769 44 Seven, seven. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Garage Guys Report. I'm Chase Holden. Thanks again for joining. Don't forget to go to Hooters. Promo code Garage Guys saves you money. Hooters is for race day. Don't forget it. Also, make sure that you like, rate, review, subscribe, comment, all that other shit. Help this show grow because this is the future number one motorsports show live on the internet worldwide i promise you and i need your help to do it so thanks so much for all the support thanks for all the voicemails don't forget to call in next week 919-769-4477 let's keep the momentum going this has been the garage guys report motorsports news for you Subscribe.